So thanks for joining me, it's Stephen here at iPhotography and today I'm going to show you how you can take old images or even just black and white images and actually put some colour back into them. This is fantastic if you've got some old family photos like I've got here and actually we're going to give them a new lease of life by adding in some really nice accurate realistic colour. So let me show you how. So to begin with, obviously all you need is a couple of old family photos that you digitized so that you can open them up in Photoshop. You'll also need to make sure that you've got the latest version of Photoshop CC available. So this is our current uh, 2021 version because what you need to make sure that you've got access to, you can find it in the filter gallery by going to filter, and neural filters. So that's what we're going to be working with today. If you've not got it, um, make sure you've got your version of Photoshop CC updated uh, to the latest version possible. If you're using older versions of Photoshop, um, then you may not have access to this at all, but it just shows you what is available there if you decide to make that jump to the newer versions. So we're going to click into neural filters. You'll see there's lots of different options in here once we go down to the beta filters or beta filters. All we need to look at now is colorize. Now, at least by pressing this, if you've not used it before, you may be asked to download it. Obviously, if you've downloaded it previously, you'll get the menus straight away. So once you've downloaded the filter, which is free for all Photoshop CC subscribers, simply make sure it's turned on, and then you'll get a preview panel that pops up to the side, but your image, as you see here on the left, has straight away added the color. And it's not a bad job in fairness. It's pretty good, this AI system, but you can still go through and make further changes. So if you scroll down with the panel open here, you see you've got your color balance channels and you can then slide things left and right if you wanna change the tones of them a little bit. But in fairness, it's not a bad job as to what it's done already. It's up to you if you wanted to tweak these sliders a little bit further left and right. You have also got the options of making some more slightly more localized adjustments. So it says at the bottom here, um, click to edit the focal point. So all we need to do is just press on our image here, wherever we want specifically, and then we can choose a particular color from our color picker that's then gonna change. So let's just do this for a dramatic effect. So let's go a full red. And then that is now going to choose everything that was in that original blue navy range and then tweak it to the red. Obviously, it's not looking great at all. We can actually drag that focal point and move it to a different point. So it renders that color based upon that one area of color and then all the other associated colors that are fairly close within it by also holding down the alt key and then pulling away from that dot. You can add another one. So if you wanted to then change the color. Again, this is done for dramatic effect. I really don't think it's actually working for the image, but it's just to show you what can be done and how you can manipulate these things. If you do find you've added too many of these extra adjustments, you can also then just press on them and then just press the minus key to get rid of them. So there, it's just to show you what can be done effectively. But if you wanted to intensify colors, just change the shades of colors a little bit more. You can do once you're happy with however you've actually got the image in terms of the coloring, at the very bottom here, you've got the options of output. Now you can keep it as a color layer, a duplicate layer, a new layer, smart filter, etc. But duplicate layer generally I find is the easiest way. So what that then gives you, as you'll see from our layers panel, it gives you the color version and a background black and white version, which was our original. So if you ever want to go back to your black and white, you've got it there, but then you've got a new color version there as well. Now you can go a little step further by adding some more adjustment filters into this here. What I tend to find using is things like the brightness adjustments. So we can use one there. I'm actually going to bring it down to the middle. And as a clipping layer, if we hold down Alt and then just hover our mouse just between the adjustment layer and the back and white and the black and white layer. So once we've actually got our adjustment layer set, we just need to change the blending mode. And I find they can use a few different ones, but I think color is quite nice. Um, so it may make the image a little bit lighter, but that's when you can then go back to your adjustment layer, double click, and then if we adjust that, you can bring in a little bit more detail around the face here of our subject, but it's not really affecting the actual top layer. It's just the luminosity of the bottom layer that's shining through because of the layer blending mode. So there's loads of different options that you can play with still uh, in terms of tweaking it a little bit further to get the desired final effect. So hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea as to what you can actually do with some old family photographs that maybe have sat in a book or an album for a long time. Make sure they're digitized and then throw them into Photoshop using the colorize and neural filters. 
So I hope you've enjoyed it. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thank you so much for watching.